South Africa is home to the world's biggest black and white rhino population. Conservationists are battling to curb the alarmingly high rate of deaths, but say the number of poachers is increasing. The figure stands at 343 animals lost to poaching, compared with a record total of 333 last year. These figures were cited from the South Africa National Parks. If we hadn't taken the measures and strict measures that we have started taking uh, of anti-rhino poaching, the numbers that are being spoken about today could have been higher. The government has given its full backing to anti-poaching methods, but more still needs to be done. In Mpumalanga province in South Africa, researchers use a dart gun to inject rhinos with a powerful sedative, grounding them so vets can sew off their horns and deter poachers from killing the animals. It's a method that has had some success stopping poachers, but there is concern that the practice is too invasive for the animals. Some rhinos that have been dehorned are still killed to get their bones or what's left of the horn, which grows back once cut like human nails. Last Friday, two Thai and one South African national, Manu Steele, a game farm owner, appeared in Kempton Park Magistrate Court in Johannesburg on rhino poaching charges. This case marks a milestone in the government's pursuit of poachers. What we're extremely pleased is that we have seen since the arrest on Friday a very, very quick move um, as far as the arrest of Marnus Dale. And I think that that was very, very important because Marnus Dale plays a major role in the syndicate. He has been providing both the rhino and the lion bones. And I think what we're also going to see tied up very closely with the rhino is what is happening in South Africa with the lion bone export. The alleged poachers are believed to have used trophy hunts as a front to launder the rhino horns and transport them to Southeast Asia. People pay large sums of money for trophy hunting safaris. They can shoot and kill animals in the wild, supposedly controlled by trained rangers and environmentalists. This remains a very controversial sport. From a conservation point of view, there are measures that we as the MINMEC, that's a meeting of ministers and uh, MECs, are now tightening the screws on the permitting system, uh, the hunting systems, for instance, uh, the hunters, legal hunters, would now, after the new regulations have been passed, be required to do hunt, being monitored by the rangers. Every uh, a hunt that has uh, been made, if uh, there's a movement out of the country, it's got to be recorded, there's got to be registered. We've started working with other countries like Vietnam, like China, it's now we have had a meeting just two days ago where there's an agreement that we'll work together in terms of monitoring these movements and registers should be shared as well. About 5,000 out of 20,000 rhinos are on private property, though experts say all rhino owners in the country are conservationists and abide by the rules. Many worry that the economics of the rhino trade present a major temptation. Rhinos sold at livestock auctions in the country to licensed buyers fetch about 20,000 to 25,000 US dollars. A rhino horn sold to poachers can fetch up to about $20,000 a kilogram. This means a licensed buyer can make an eightfold return on investment by killing a rhino for its horns. If all this fails, Edna Molewa says South Africa will put a ban on rhino hunting, which is still legal in some areas. The major argument has been for an outright ban believed to be the only way for South Africa to demonstrate their commitment to putting an end to killing endangered species altogether.